Hey guys, in this tutorial, we take a look at how to create realistic torso movements in conjunction with an arm movement. So what we'll be doing with this tutorial is creating a torso that acts realistically to arm movements. We'll start by drawing the torso, the details for the torso, then we'll apply some bones, and then we will see how we can make the torso react to the arm. First, we'll take the add point tool so that we can draw the torso out, and we're going to come in here, I'll expand my stage, and we'll make sure we turn on the guides here, and we'll just draw out a torso. You can see we're starting at the top and then dipping inward for the bottom of the body, and we're going to create the shoulder and then the neck. Now, we can copy and paste this whole shape by selecting all the points, control C, control V, and then flipping horizontally, and then placing the shape right there. Now, you can adjust your points so that they connect. We can just bring it in like that. And the points are now connected, creating one solid piece. Now, with the Create Shape tool, we can select a fleshy color here. And by clicking the torso, we can click Create Shape to apply that color. And now, we can come in and start drawing some details for the body. We'll start first with the chest, the chest muscles, and you can see we can just draw out a line and use the Create Shape tool to draw out that line, and we can come in here and taper our lines with the Taper tool. Now we'll want to select all the lines here, or all the points, once we get things adjusted here, and copy and then paste, and then do the horizontal flip technique again. So just like that, and then we can bring it over like so. So now with that, next is creating the collarbone. So we're gonna just draw out some lines here, just like that. And we'll be using the Create Shape tool once we get the outline. So just click the Create Shape tool, click the line, and then click Create Shape. We'll be using the stroke color from the style menu, and then we can taper the lines off just like that. Now we're going to do the same technique here, but first we want to put the line up towards the torso, but we're having that issue where it's trying to connect. So what we can do here is you can see we deselected auto weld. This will allow you then to put your points wherever you want them without fear of it connecting to another line or point. And once you do that, you are now free to move the point around and we can position the point then where we need it to and then we can Highlight the whole thing once we have positioned it. And then we can copy and paste with Control C, Control V, and then flip horizontally. So that is the collarbone. So next, we'll create some more details here. We'll start with the rib cage. So add point tool again. We'll come down here and we will simply just draw in the rib cage like so. Again, it's going to be the same technique. We can bring it up like this. We're going to create that shape. And then we will taper the lines. And then we will copy and paste using the horizontal flip method. Also, when you create a shape, when you highlight the shape, you can also use spacebar if you wish. You don't always have to go up to that create shape button. So once we move the second piece of the rib cage in, we should be good to go. And now we can add some additional lines at the bottom here. Again, you don't have to add all these details. And of course, your character will vary depending on what your style is. But for this demonstration, we'll be adding in these details just to give you an example of how things are going to look. So once you have that, we can also, if we want to, add in some even additional details or more details, we can create a line here going from the collarbone down to the chest. And we can just use the Create Shape tool and create that. And we can taper the lines off. And we can even decrease the width of the line even more because it won't have as much of a shadow as the other lines. Now we could also, if we wanted to, and again, this is up to you, we can create some necklines for this as well. So we can come in here and we'll just add some necklines. 
And again, your character designs will probably vary. We're creating a pretty muscular dude here as well. But this will work for all different types of torsos. Hopefully you can apply this lesson to your own style. And that is always the goal with our incredible tutorials. So we're just coming in here and we are tapering the lines, moving the lines up a little bit. You know, just kind of positioning some neck lines here. Because again, this is a very strong individual. He could probably beat me up, I'm sure. Well, anyone could beat me up, really. But we'll just copy these lines then and then paste them on the other side and then do the horizontal flip and put them right over here. So now, the next part is creating a name for this layer. So we'll just double click on that layer and we'll name it Torso and then click OK. Now we'll need to make a new layer, a vector layer, and name this one Arm. Just like that. Hit enter. And we're now going to draw out an arm. It's going to be pretty simple. Again, this is a tutorial. We're trying to, you know, get through this as quick as we can while trying to give you guys the principles here. But as you can see, we're just coming down here and we're just going to draw out a simple arm. And obviously, if you were doing this on your own, you could work on more details to make it uh, look more as if it were in perspective and all that. But when you're practicing all this, usually it's best just to kind of roll with it and just kind of work on it on your own time and perfect it in your own time. If you can get this technique down with your own style right now, that's great. From there, you can perfect the details later on because it's very easy to move your points around to, you know, resize stuff. So what we're going to do is come in here and the initial attempt of the arm was kind of scrawny. So we're going to come in here and just kind of bulk him up a little bit, give him a, give him some protein, I guess, and have him lift some weights here, get that arm up to par. So, and you can do this very easily. As you can see, we use the curvature tool here to kind of tighten up those points. We're also coming in here and just moving the points around just to kind of give it some more bulk in the bicep. And we can just kind of come in here and just fine tune things. And again, we won't spend too much time on this portion, but it should give you an idea of what things can look like as we move forward. And the focus here, again, isn't so much the arm as it will be the chest effect, which you'll be seeing here momentarily. So now we need to select a new layer and we're going to make this a patch. So once we make this a patch, we're going to target the torso. And then we can move that patch and we can make it as big as we need to just so that it covers that line that's intersecting with the torso and the arm. And then the next step here is to make another layer. We'll make this a bone layer and we can name this body or whatever you wish. And we're going to move all three layers that we just made into the body bone layer. Now you could do this beforehand, but sometimes we do it afterwards here at Incredible Tutorials. And we're going to remove the fills so it's easier to see where we're placing the bones. So now we're going to hit the add bone tool so that we can add our bones. So we'll start from the bottom. And again, this isn't a rigging tutorial, so it's going to be pretty simple, but we're just going to go up like this, one bone. Try that again. There we go. And then another bone. And then we'll do one for the neck as well. And we will then select the second bone. And then we can just create a bone like that going across and then one going down for the top portion of the arm, kind of going down to where the elbow might be, and then another one connecting like that. So now we'll select the bone influence tool and we can just remove the bone influence from all of these bones just by highlighting them all and dragging to the left. And now we can click on the link tool to see that everything is linked up the way we want it to be. And we can move this arm and we can see that it all works the way it should. So now the next step here is to come in and we're going to bind this body to the bones and we're going to be using the different layers here. So we'll start first with the torso bone and we're going to click on the torso layer and we will choose the bind points tool and we're going to select the whole torso okay, and click bind points. 
This is easier to do as we will now be picking it apart as we move up. So now we'll click on the middle torso bone or the top torso bone, I should say, and we're going to select the bind points tool and we're just gonna try to get in the top portion of the torso now, just like that, and then bind points. Now, once again, coming over here, we're gonna select the neck bone and we're gonna come in with the bind points tool come in here and highlight some stuff and it, just the very top of it will work. Now we're going to do the same here for the arm. First let's cover the shoulder and then we'll cover the arm. Clicking the top arm bone we can come in here and highlight the whole arm just like we did initially with the torso that covers all points and then we break it down. Here's the bottom bone, here's the influence for that bone. So now if we put fills back on we can come over here then and click the bind tool we want to get that patch layer in as well so we'll just bind it to the top arm bone. Now we can take the manipulate bones tool and click on the body bone layer and we can move this around and you can see right now it's actually working pretty good but we need to put in some restraints for this so first we'll click on the shoulder bone and then we can come up here first we'll rename it to CB that'll stand for collarbone and then we can click on the top arm and name that arm and we're doing this just for our smart bones initially here. And we can come in here now, click on that collarbone, and set the restraint or the constraint to, let's say, 10 or negative 10, around like that. Because the collarbone isn't going to move a whole lot. It's going to be pretty confined to where it's at. We can close that panel. And we, now we can do the same for the arm bone. And we can come in here, and we can set the points to about like so and then click close. So now, if we test this out again, take the manipulate bones tool, we move the arm around, we can see now how this is going to look. We can have him shrug his shoulder, we can move up and down, and so on. So you can see things are working pretty good. We have the collarbone, you know, being affected by this, but we can go further by using smart bones. So if we go up to window and choose the actions panel, now, before we make a smart bone action, remember, in order to achieve this, you must name your smart bone action the same name as the bone you want it to react to. So in this case, we'll be naming this one arm, and that will allow us to go into the action and perform the smart bone action. And with smart bones, we're now in the smart bone action, so we want to create the extreme motion for this. So when the arm is raised up, we're going to dictate what happens then to these details. So with the arm raised up, remember this is the extreme position, we're going to have the muscles react. So we'll click on the body bone layer first, and we can actually move the bone itself up along with this smart bone action because the arm will lift up a little bit more as it lifts up just to give it a little bit more realism so we can just drag that arm up slightly like that and the arm should be set now. Now we can come into the muscle details so we'll go onto the torso layer and we'll come in here and we will first adjust the chest muscle come in here and just readjust the points to kind of stretch upward with it And then we can do the same for the collarbone. So we'll come in here and just do some adjusting like so. And again, this will take some experimentation. It will depend on your character design, of course. But as you can see, we're just kind of shortening it here and getting it set. And we can adjust the outside of the neck and the shoulder part as well. And we can come down here. The rib cage won't move as much, but we can just make some tiny little adjustments here, you know, just to make it a little bit more dynamic. And we can do the same with that line down there as well. And we can now come in here to the arm and also adjust the arm. So it's kind of doing a little bit of a different flex positioning, if you will. So we'll come in here and just 
do some minor adjustments to the points just to kind of make that arm look a little bit more realistic as it moves up. And then we can come back out here to our main timeline by double clicking on the main line on our actions panel, clicking on the body layer, and then taking the manipulate bones tool. And we'll come in here and see how this looks. So we move the arm up and we can see that those muscles react and it's working pretty well. Things are looking good. It's not perfect, of course. We could come in here and do some adjusting. For instance, when the arm comes onto the other side, crossing the torso, we could do some different things. And we could also have the muscles react in those ways and add some constraints there if we want. But as you can see, for the most part, it's looking good. We might make one more little adjustment here, though. See, there's the part where it crosses the torso, you could do something with that. But we may come in here and make some adjustments to the outside of the body. So we can come back here and let me just look again here. Okay. Yeah, let's go back into that arm action here. And then we will take the torso layer and then the translate points tool and we'll just come in here and just move that portion of the body up a little bit you know just again just another little reaction to how the muscles are moving and we can make a few more adjustments come back out here to the main line and we will try it one more time and the way this is moving right now too it's probably going to move pretty quick when you do it I'll get rid of the bones here so we can see more of what's going on but you can see here that you know, it's looking pretty good, but you'll probably have more quick movements when you do this kind of stuff. So you can really play with it and you can go beyond this. You can add more than one bone action if you want to really enhance how the chest will react to the muscles when the arm moves and so on. So anyway, that wraps this up. Again, pretty simple, but if you apply it to your own techniques, I think you'll find it to be of value. It will really add more realism to your character movements. This has been an incredible joint tutorial. Thanks to Jim Mills for doing the visuals. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I have done the narration. If you liked what you saw here, please subscribe. Check us out on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and more. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.